Hello, and welcome to Davlin's second toolkit series. My name is Ruth Jacob, Marketing and Public Relations for Davlin, alongside Dave Jacob. At Davlin, we speak business and we understand technology. And today we're presenting an example of a common business problem that we're using technology to solve using IBM WebSphere Portlet Factory. So you've been a Lotus developer for a long time now, and your skill set is becoming somewhat obsolete. Right now, you don't speak Java language, and your company doesn't have the resources or the time to let you take six months or even a year off to learn a language with a huge learning curve. So what are you supposed to do? Here today is Davlin's managing partner, Dave Jacob. Dave has been a Lotus Notes user since 1993, and as a user and IBM certified instructor, he's been using Java and WebSphere Portlet Factory since they were introduced so many years ago. <laughs> Welcome, Dave. Thanks, Ruth. So the uh, problem that we're trying to address today is the fact that you have these domino skills, um, your company wants to move into a Java portal environment, and you're not quite sure how to get there. So what we want to introduce today is a tool called IBM's Portlet Factory. It's a domino-like tool that allows us to do development of Java things without having to write a lot of Java code, just like domino and the formula language and the at functions that we're all very familiar with. So let's take a look at how we might do that. Um, I've built a Portlet Factory project, which is just a wizard that takes maybe 15 seconds to build. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is introduce you to a common domino problem. I have a domino view that I want to display on the web. Um, it's going to look very much like what you've done in domino, but in this case it's going to be written in the Java language, but I'm not going to write any Java code. So, so this is really going to help those in a bind right now. Exactly. They're really not sure where, which way to go now. So we're going to use the skills that you've developed and write some Java code. So okay. basically I'm going to choose a builder list here in the tool, okay. and you see here's a list of lots of different things that are called builders. They're just like the at functions in the formula language, and the one that I'm going to start with is one called domino view and form. Okay. So let's choose that one. What that will do then is give me a list of all of the domino databases on the server, um, and I'll choose the database that I want to work on for now, okay. and in this case it's the expenses NSF database. And it fills out all these other choices for me, except for which view do I want to use. So I have a drop-down list, and I've chosen this particular view. And so it kind of gives you the to tools do. you need, right? So, so you don't have to come up with it from memory. Exactly. It shows you so right there. Now I want to show this on the web. What else do I have to do? Okay. I just click Run. There's the report. That's it. Just run. <laughs> so now we have a report. And you'll look at the report and say, well, that's nice, but I didn't want to show all the columns, or they're too wide or I want to format dollars in a different way, or the time shows the seconds, and I don't want that. So what do I do about that? So maybe you don't want certain employees to see what other people are making, for exactly. example. Exactly. Okay. So let's take a look. Well, we have another builder. So let's go choose that builder. This one is called uh, the Domino da Data Column Modifier. And what it allows me to do is look at all of the columns that are showing on the screen and modify them, just, okay. just what you'd expect. It filled out everything for me, and I'll let uh, make this a little larger so you can see it. So I've decided to hide some of the columns, show some of the columns, and if I were to scroll over a little further, there's some other choices that say I want to sort based on this column, I want to align it to the right or to the left or to center. So I'm hiding columns, aligning columns, and sorting columns just by making choices in this table. So you can even make it look pretty. That's right, even make <laughs> it look pretty. And now when I run the report, I only see those four columns. Okay. Um, some of them are sortable. Um, I also get this little slider bar that what I also told it that you didn't see is one of the choices. I said, I only want to show 10 rows at a time, so I don't want to have to scroll off the screen. I wanted some help there. So it wrote the Java code to build this little slider. Now I can navigate through the view a little at a time. Okay. So in, in uh, a matter of a couple of minutes, using two builders, I have now built a report in Java on the web. That seems pretty impressive. What else can this program do? Show ah, me. So let's look at something a little more complex that we might be able to do using builders. Okay. And what I've done is pre-built another application, and it involves 23 builders. Wow. So okay. um, again, still no Java code. I have to know what the builders are. So part of the learning is learning what these builders are, just like I learned the formula language and the at functions in Domino. Way Nothing back when. like a whole language, though. No, nope, no language. I haven't, okay. I haven't said a Java word yet. <laughs> um, and so I make these choices. I, I choose some things. Um, and then I run this builder, and what I get is uh, a report. This is actually running against a relational database in database uh, DB2, IBM's product for relational databases. You see it has some navigation buttons at the top. It has some uh, hot links here to look at more information about records, et cetera. The other thing that it'll do is if I click on this particular button, the departments, I want to graph some of this data. So I used a builder to do that, and now the graph is here. So basically in the span of... Uh, a few hours, I have built this whole application, and, uh, wow. and now it does lots of things for me, showing graphically as well as data. 
So, okay, so what is, how does Davlin help people learn this particular ah. program? So as you su su suspect, there's a little hook here in that this is actually an exercise from the Davlin training course. So we've been working with Portland Factory for several years now, and what we learned on our consulting assignments with IBM and other clients mm -hmm. is that there are certain things that you need to do over and over again. We have compiled those into a class that we call Davlin's Portland Factory Top Gun class. It's a five-day class. This lab is taken from that class. You would actually cover this lab on day four, and you would do this application in about two hours. Wow. So you literally are doing some things that you might encounter on the job. That's exactly what the course is designed to do, to make you productive from the first day. Wow. So hopefully you learned a thing or two with our special guest today, Dave Jacob. We encourage you all to check out Portland Factory for yourself. Log on to our website today at davlin.com to learn a little bit more information and feel free to use the contact us form for us to get back to you. Davlin offers several solutions including training, mentoring, and implementation that help you flatten out that steep learning curve. So take a look today.